Hey! PCCL channel greets you. Why does H2 exist? Why do some atoms become ions? How are molecules formed? The answers are in this table. What governs the evolution of elements is called the octet rule. During their chemical transformations, the atoms tend to combine in such a way that they have the same electronic configuration in their valence shell as the nearest noble gas. The noble gases, or inert gases, are on the rightmost column. They have a full outermost shell and will no longer change. Helium, its K shell has two electrons. Neon K2L8, full valence shell with eight electrons. Argon K2L8 M8, full outermost shell with eight. They are so called inert because they do not react chemically. They are stable. So the first column. These three elements have the same representation of Lewis. They have one valence electron. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, what can become of them to look like the nearest inert gas? Sodium, for example, Z equals 11 is very close to neon Z equals 10. To look like neon, it may lose its valence electron. At that point, it can become the sodium ion. This is why the sodium ion exists in this form. Lithium, if it loses its electron, the one that is there, will become the lithium ion, a positive ion since it loses an electron, and it will have the same electronic configuration as helium K2. Hydrogen is a special case. If it loses its electron it no longer has any electronic structure at all. So it can't look like another atom. It loses its electron and becomes a proton. Here, the symbol of the proton, it is H+. Or else hydrogen can very well associate with an atom which also has one valence electron. And which would like to complete, fill up its valence shell at 8. So these are very well placed. I show you here. That's the electronic structure of chlorine here. Chlorine has one electron available to engage in a binding doublet, and three lone pairs. If hydrogen and it combine, here we will have a binding doublet which is the pooling of two electrons, one coming from hydrogen and the other coming from chlorine to form the hydrogen chloride. This is why hydrogen chloride exists. This is also why dihydrogen exists. One hydrogen with its counterpart, if they put their electron together, they will have here a covalent bond. Here, what can happen to beryllium or magnesium to have the same electronic structure as the nearest rare gas? Beryllium loses two electrons, the two electrons of the outermost shell, magnesium do. So beryllium will have the same electronic structure as helium and magnesium will have the same electronic structure as neon. Here you have Al3+, you followed? Na+, Mg2+, Al3+, Y3+, well, because the aluminum is placed here in the filling of the shells. Its atomic number is 13. So K2L8M3. These three electrons, if it loses them, it will have the same electronic structure as the neon which is the closest inert gas. For boron, this is a special case that does not work since boron trifluoride exists. Boron, here, does not satisfy the octet rule. It has only 6 electrons around it. On the other hand, each fluorine has an 8 electrons around it and satisfies the octet rule. Why methane? Why CH4? Well, because carbon has 4 valence electrons, available, ready to associate with, each one, the electron of a hydrogen to make binding doublets and form methane CH4. Carbon is said to be tetravalent. And why not make double bonds here for ethene and ethylene? So, if you count, here you have 8 electrons around the carbon, the octet rule is verified. Therefore the silane exists. Here since there is CH4 and carbon and silicon on the same column. They're going to form the same sort of molecules. We see that nitrogen and phosphorus have the same valence shell. Here, with a lone pair and three electrons available.
This explains why dinitrogen exists. There is a triple bond. Each thus will keep its lone pair. So that each nitrogen atom is surrounded by eight electrons. Just like neon. Ammonia exists. I'll let you check that the octet rule is satisfied here. Well, we are starting to have negative ions. The oxygen ion. Why would the oxygen ion be negative? Well, if he wants to have the electronic configuration of neon, which is there. Since he only has 8 electrons, if he wants to have 10, he's missing 2. So he's going to take 2 electrons where there are electron donors, to get those 10 electrons. Therefore, yes, the oxygen ion exists. And is written O2 minus. The same as for the sulfur ion, which also exists, and which has the formula S2 minus. Did I mention oxygen? I would be remiss if I didn't talk about it. Check that the octet rule is verified. Also check that the octet rule satisfies the oxygen here, that there are 8 electrons. There is the water molecule. You know it. Carbon dioxide and carbon disulfide, the same. Here, what I said for the oxygen ion is true for the chloride ion here, which needs an electron to have the same structure as argon. The atom has only 17 electrons. If it goes looking for an electron, it will have 18. It will have the same electronic structure as argon. Fluorine, with one more electron to give the fluoride ion, which will have the same electronic structure as neon. Its outermost shell will be full and therefore the ion exists. The fluoride ion exists. It satisfies the octet rule. Hydrogen chloride, we have already talked about it. Chlorine gas. Check it out. Hydrogen fluoride, which still looks a lot like hydrogen chloride. And finally this column. But I do not speak about it since it is that of inert gases, that is to say that these atoms have no reason to evolve chemically. They have a full valence shell. That's it for this video. Thank you.